Hi guys, my name is Scott Kirby and I'm the current SRC Vice President of Student Activities. I'm running to be your next SRC President. Hi Scott. Hi. Um, so the SRC and the University will be reviewing their strategies um, soon. What do you think should be prioritised in these reviews from the SRC's perspective? So I think in, in terms of the SRC point of view, our strategy um, was from 2015 to 2020 um, and we need to take a long hard look at uh, our key performance indicators in terms of what we've um, accomplished and what we may not have accomplished. I think there are some areas that we really do need to look into that we may not have um, necessarily put at the forefront of our efforts for whatever reason the last few years. So things like uh, promoting the postgraduate experience, um, promoting and looking after the international student experience as well because there are some inconsistencies there that we need to look after. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, buzzword engagement with the SRC, um, we, we can see that, you know, there is there is trouble there, we are struggling. Um, and I think that is also something we need to kind of prioritise and look at. And um, I suppose as well, we, we need to kind of base the strategy around what are the expectations and um, the needs of uh, students currently, you know, we can see in Guardian articles that you know, one in three students don't drink anymore and there, there's a very set, different set of expectations and there's a very different set of needs for students coming in past 2020 and obviously we need to absolutely take into account um, that we are in a, a state of transition, the, the next strategy will cover um, 2021 onwards and that includes the new campus development and how that affects students I think there are a lot of students here who are a little bit disillusioned with the fact that they are coming to university in this point of transition. They may not necessarily uh, be here to see some of the amazing buildings that we have in the, West, the Western mm -hmm. campus. I think trying to prioritise that aspect of the student experience as well is something we need to look into um, and prioritise and have some key performance indicators in relation to as well. Yeah, so. perfect. So you mentioned the, uh, you mentioned the inconsistencies faced by international students and something you also bring up in your manifesto. Sure. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you think these inconsistencies are and how you aim to fix them. So some of the inconsistencies are in the international student experience from what we can tell from students, um, from the feedback that we get, arise around things like, um, you know, Glasgow International College is a route way for international students but they, they head straight into second year. Do they, do they get the same kind of entry experience than first years? How does that affect them? Um, international students as well, you know, we, we've had um, feedback in regards to the, the ability of international students to cope with, um, uh, you know, exams and you know, in, uh, dictionaries has been quite a big thing that's come up recently in terms of um, making sure that international students are supported, and we want to make sure that through the um, English language development program that Leeds put on, um, that students are actually covered by it. You know, they get the skills that they require to be able to. Um, achieve just as much as kind of a native student here and I think you know the university is placing a lot of interest on international students there are a lot you know, from last year this year we've seen an increase in them um, coming to the university and we want to make sure that they are as supported as possible they are a key demographic of students coming to this university you know transnationalization is a massive thing here um, so it's it's about managing those expectations and managing the experience that those students have coming into the university because um, it is a very different one compared to those coming from our UK or from Scotland itself. Yeah. So. You mentioned something about the um, English language uh, issue, the language issue faced by some international students. Do you think that the SRC should be, that something's been brought up by other candidates as well, um, do you think it's something that the SRC should be looking at um, whether or not you, whether the university is happy to take your students money while allowing them into university? before they've reached an adequate level of mm -hmm. English capability? Yeah, I think, I think more work needs to be done in terms of kind of figuring out whether or not the uh, English language requirements that we place on students is, is um, up to standard, it's up to our expectation because we can't, you know, it's a bit unfair if we, if we have you know, a relatively, let's say, low um, English language um, expectation and yet our expectation for how those students perform is, is much higher than that. So we, we need to look into it more and see if, if there is parity there. If um, English language, sorry, students coming in um, from international backgrounds um, via a specific international English language translation score, mm -hmm. IELTS score, if that matches what, what we are expecting students in terms of their English language ability, in terms of um, you know, their ability to write a cohesive essay, um, 
it, it, it's, it's a difficult one because you know we, we want to be able to encourage students to come here you know, we've got one in access and we want to make sure that Glasgow is an accessible university but we, what we don't want is to bring international students in and then have an unreasonable expectation based on the kind of entry level yeah. requirements that we have so. Yeah. so you mentioned also about um, the campus as a whole mm -hmm. um, and obviously mentioned in your manifesto that you want to um, you want to review the room booking challenges that are faced by societies and university. Now, it might be the case that the university would be quite keen to keep these challenges yeah. given the fact that they are potentially one of a number of ways of offsetting the costs yes, for of sure. campus redevelopment. Do you think that that's going to be a barrier that we going to face? Um, so there is work ongoing with this right now um, and I don't, I think the reason why the university puts a cost on some rooms is because it's an opportunity cost, but I think we really need to hit home and lobby the university to understand that you know there are, there are real opportunities to actually kind of encourage and back students to be doing some amazing things on campus. Like recently, um, it's come it's come to light through my experience through the club and society committee that we have in the SRC, which is in charge of um, affiliations and grant applications, all that kind of lovely stuff. That you know there are a lot of student conferences going on on campus, but a lot of them are actually being priced out of the ability to actually hold them because of mm -hmm. Uh, the price that's affiliated with the different kind of rooms that students need um, and I think it's it's about lobbying the university to understand that you know we are a huge university we do have facilities here we should be really encouraging this kind of activity on campus and um, you know one of the main barriers for these clubs and societies which is something we need to, to get, gain more evidence for in order to lobby the university is that some of these rooms are just completely um, out of the question because and of that's the price. something you're going to put to the university. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, something we're currently putting to the university. I know it comes up year and year, but it's it's one of those kind of things that come up in the SSC that we try to work on year after year, and it's coming to a point now where uh, I think we can sit down with the university and with the states and actually come together with a good plan. Um, you know, we understand that the university do they do need to cover costs, mm -hmm. but. Um, more can be done in the way of trying to alleviate those costs that clubs and societies may come across. Um, so you mentioned in your manifesto that you want to uh, take more inclusive membership options for um, University of Glasgow sport. Given the fact that the biggest barrier there is probably the immediate cost barrier um, and that there's no hope of changing that, how, what ways do you see of making um, university of sport engagement more inclusive? I think the main point regarding this is, you know, obviously Goose have, have come into some barriers in terms of trying to inspect and, and change the membership options and, you know, that there is there is a portion of students on campus who, who find the, uh, the membership to the gym, for example, quite quite unaffordable and I think, I think from my experience this year, I've found that um, lobbying jointly um, can be quite beneficial because, you know, we are seeing on our side of things, not necessarily in the, the realm of Goose of Sport, that there are students who, who are finding themselves priced out of engaging with um, university sport or uh, you know buying a gym membership, and I think there is there is power to be to be had there in terms of jointly lobbying for that. Um, you know there there are some things that I'd like to see happen. Uh, for example, having alternative um, you know membership um, schemes for first year home students because you know those students might want to be involved in. Uh, club sport but not necessarily want to go to the gym because they've got a gym at home and I think yeah, obviously price and cost is a big issue but we really do need to look at the kind of different needs of students we have a, a, you know, a massive demographic of different groups of students here at this university and we should really try and accommodate them as best we can yes this is an issue for GUSA but I do think you know, lobbying together has, has some power in terms of just trying to get those conversations restarted I think so yeah Perfect, yeah. Um, so, you mentioned also that you think that the SRC should be camp campaigning politically on a local and national level. What kinds of campaigns do you think the SRC should be involved in? I think it's a case of that we should be much more visibly involved in uh, in campaigns. So things like you know the youth climate strike movement. Um, I'm seeing my colleagues at student unions, uh, you know, Strathclyde and Caledonian, being involved in in those kind of campaigns and I think that we should be a lot more politically visible in that way you know we, we've joined in campaigns such as uh, you know my colleague Farmer has done the let's stop now campaign I believe the, uh, the one that was on the library wall um, about um, gender-based violence mm -hmm. um, and I think we sh you know there are a lot of campaigns that 
you know, are in the best interest of students that we should really be trying our best to get involved in. And even if that's you know showing face at rallies, for example, I think that is a quite important thing. Um, and you know, we could absolutely do better to get involved in stuff like that. So, so NUS membership isn't on the cards then? Um, I don't think so, no. Um, and obviously the rector elections will be coming up as well shortly. Mm -hmm. um, will the SRC be campa campaigning, putting forward a candidate for those? Or will you be encouraging a campaign for an actively engaged rector considering the fact that we've not seen one of those on campus for a while? I think um, the limits of what we could do during rector elections is to encourage candidates to run which you know are going to be as uh, visible and engaged and ever present on campus as we possibly can um, but it is a case of it is up to the student population uh, to, to nominate um, rectors uh, candidates for that and, and it's just a case of that we, we need to try and encourage those who are nominating to put forward candidates who will actually um, be representative and be beneficial to the university um, because you know the rector is an important position here at the university and we, we want to make sure that the next one is uh, just as good as some of the rectors that we've had in the past and you know we've had a rector which is which has been present on campus and has been visible um, compared to previous rectors you know Edward Snowden wasn't exactly in a position to be here and we want to make sure that um, the next set of rector candidates are reflective of, of how important that position is and how and um, how much they should be getting engaged with students on campus. Yeah. So the SRC won't be endorsing any candidates specifically? Um, I, I don't know plans to just yet, but you know, we, we can get it, sure. Um, and you mentioned lastly um, in your manifesto that you're keen to get SRC video updates um, for council activities and things like that um, shared. Uh, it's been promised before by candidates for SRC elections, but it's not been something that's been maintained. Um, how do you plan to maintain this as a priority? Um, so, in terms of putting out videos, um, I think that the, main, the main reason behind this, and again obviously this is something that is brought up year on year, but the main reason behind this is because now we're seeing students and you know, the general population, they engage a lot more through through videos and through visual means as opposed to just big blocks of text. You know, I'm, I'm doing the same kind of thing in my, in my manifest, in my campaign at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, ten seconds, for example, is kind of the cut-off point for students or people in, in terms of their general interest in videos. So I think changing to that kind of way of engagement is important now, uh, especially because social media is, is a much more um, engaging tool. And uh, you know, I've had experience on the social media team prior to uh, when I was a sabbatical officer. I've I've got quite a lot of experience in creating that kind of content and pushing that kind of content and understanding what it is, which is. Uh, engaging so it will always be something that I'll be thinking about as the year goes forward I think it is important in the sense of trying to address this perennial problem of you know student engagement with the SRC and um, there's maybe something that could get sidelined I mean first and foremost that this job is this is managing the organization and you know there may be things that come up through the year you know this job is reactive as well um, you know, we saw the strikes yeah. last year We've seen other things that have taken time from the present, so that always has to take priority. But um, I don't think that we should accept that you know, engagement and these videos are things that can just fall off the radar because it, you know, we represent almost 28,000 students, so we should be telling them what we're doing, we should be held accountable. And if this is one way we can um, quite easily do that in terms of you know, the time put in, then I don't expect it'll be something to drop off, and I don't want to even accept that this is something that I'm willing to let drop off. So.